Uh, first off, let's just get to some of the news. On Monday, you've got this meeting between uh, the top general and the president of South Korea. What do you think they need to say or do during this, uh, this really contentious time? Well, good morning. Uh, I think that's a very timely meeting uh, taking to, to take place in Korea. And uh, under the circumstances, I think all of, our, all of the countries concerned, including the United States and South Korea, should uh, base our policies on the recognition that there is an extremely uh, tense situation on the peninsula, probably the most dangerous one in recent years. Uh, absolutely. People talking about a possible military conflict or even nuclear war. Do you think we're anywhere close to that? Um, I hope not. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, oh, a war breaks out uh, not because it is intended, but a lot of times because of just because of an escalation. So we should be uh, really paying attention to the situation and uh, take every caution. Professor, the last time we spoke was about a decade ago in Seoul, and since then, so many things have happened with North Korea. I just wonder, since we've been talking about this for the longest time, since the Korean War, at what time will the collapse of the North Korean regime become less of a threat to China than allowing North Korea to carry on this way? Well, as you know, uh, China uh, also uh, does not want North Korea to go nuclear. Uh, it is not in the interest of China. Uh, but at the same time, uh, China does not want to see North Korea going down. So it, China's difficulty is that uh, they need to pursue a denuclearization of North Korea while, uh, you know, sort of keeping it alive. Um, but this is time for China to be more uh, proactive uh, because they, they are the one who can uh, prevent North Korea's miscalculation about what is going to really happen if they go for further provocations.